Ladies and gentlemen, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Thank you to the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines for inviting me to speak at your Supply Chain Conference. The Department of Trade and Industry considers the supply chain sector as an essential partner in trade and commerce, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The NEDA estimated the country suffered about 2.2 trillion pesos in terms of economic loss due to COVID-19. As reported by the Supply Chain and Logistics Association, supply chain and logistics were also severely affected by the pandemic. For one, we saw what was a looming port congestion during the Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ. For another, the reduced operating capacity likewise at the start of the lockdown limited the manpower resources needed that caused delays in the delivery of goods and services at that time. Meanwhile, high international shipping rates by shipping lines imposing demurrage, detention, and container deposit charges added to the burden of shippers, consignees, and the truckers. Further, warehouses hit full capacity due to the lack of business activities at the uh, downstream industries. In some cases, some companies reported bankruptcy. To address these issues, DTI took the following actions with the help of other government agencies to mitigate the impact of the pandemic and the resulting lockdown. For one, we spearheaded the formulation of the Joint Administrative Order or the JAO 2001 with the Philippine Ports Authority, the Bureau of Customs, uh, the Department of Agriculture, and of course with the Department of Transportation. This JAO was in line with the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases, Resolution Number 16, uh, that directed us to address the disruptions in the supply chain and withdraw immediately all refrigerated containers as well as dry vans. Aside from involving government agencies, this directive called on importers, consignees, truckers, shipping lines, and port operators to address the impending port congestion and possible disruption in supplies. With the issuance of the JAO, the PPA eventually reported yard utilization dropping to 65% to 67% on the average from as high as 90 to 98% during the early part of the ECQ. To reduce the unreasonable international shipping charges, we had a meeting also with the DOTR uh, sometime June 2020 with principals also from the, of course, uh, we were joined by the uh, Executive Secretary and this resulted in DOTR uh, Secretary Tugade issuing three department orders to address the complaints of shippers and resolve the high shipping charges, including the formation of the Shippers Protection Office under PPA. With the eventual lifting of ECQ, the government is now working towards helping businesses uh, affected by the economic effects of the pandemic. To help the supply chain sector, Republic Act 11494 or the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act or otherwise known as Bayanihan 2 prioritizes the minimizing of disruptions to the supply chain as well as improving the national end-to-end -end supply chain. To quote, this includes measures to reduce logistics costs and regulating and waiving as necessary the extra shipping charges imposed by the international shipping lines especially for basic commodities and services to the maximum extent possible. Likewise, DTI is now working closely with the Small Business Corporation, SB Corp, to develop a recovery package for small enterprise truckers. SB Corp is now preparing a financial scheme for these groups heavily affected by the pandemic. Presently, DTI is the chair of the sub-task force on food value chain and logistics. And we brought together public and private stakeholders like industry association and development partners under this group. Our task force main goal is to increase production and ensure supply stability for basic necessities and prime commodities through new business models. One of the projects of the sub task force is the demand supply planning and optimization system or deploy. This 
project will provide initial analytic data to identify gaps between supply and demand. It will also provide measures to ensure efficient flow of goods and adequate food supplies during pandemics. The group is also working with USAID on the promotion of Deliver E, which is a uh, digital platform designed to connect farmers to buyers through an efficient and transparent end-to-end market-based system while addressing supply chain gaps. Likewise, USAID is also uh, DTI's partner in the development of a warehousing study to provide a clearer picture of the warehousing and storage sector. These are just among the many initiatives of all the stakeholders in this sector to address the multifaceted issues that bring up the logistics cost in the country. With several victories, big and small, we hope to bring down the share of logistics costs to total operating costs closer to the 10 to 15 percent range, similar to the numbers of our neighboring countries. In closing, DTI would like to thank the supply chain sector for keeping your operations running even during the height of the pandemic and for being with us in the food value chain and logistics subgroup to jointly find solutions to the issues in the sector. Your sector is the lifeblood that kept our nation alive. We also reiterate our full commitment and support to your sector, especially as we build back better under the leadership of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Instead of adjusting to the new normal, let us try to create a better normal where all Filipinos can enjoy the fruits of our country's inclusive growth and shared prosperity for all. Together, we heal as one. Together, we recover as one. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat.